Hello guys and welcome back to Jaegerists. In today's video, we'll be going through the story of Levi Ackerman, humanity's strongest soldier. Levi is the son of Kuchil Ackerman, a prostitute who worked in the underground and was made pregnant by one of her clients. One day, Kenny Ackerman, Kuchil's older brother, came to the city to see her, only to find out that she was dead. There, he found a young and squalid Levi sitting in front of his mother's bed. In a rare showing of compassion, Kenny decided to take care of him. He raised Levi as well as he could, teaching him knife skills, how to get along with people, and violent behavior. Levi also learned to use his own inner power that he possessed as a member of the Ackerman clan. Time passed and eventually, Kenny taught Levi everything he knew. However, he didn't consider himself as a good father figure. One day in the subterranean city, Levi started a fight which he easily won. At that moment, Kenny decided to leave him behind satisfied that he had taught Levi the skills he needed to survive. Later, he became a notorious thug in the underground but eventually left the place to join the Survey Corps. Although he was at odds with Irwin, he ended up becoming one of his most trusted men. Levi is seen leaving Trust District along with the rest of the Survey Corps on the 56th Expedition Beyond the Walls. The same day, the Colossus Titan attacks the district. While on the expedition, Levi sees a soldier caught in the jaws of a nearby titan and kills it. As more titans approach, Levi orders Pecharal to take care of the injured soldier while he takes care of the remaining titans. After clearing the immediate area, Levi checks on the injured soldier, who is quickly succumbing to his injuries. In an attempt to comfort the scout in his dying moments, Levi assures him that he has done his duty well. As the soldier dies, Erwin arrives and informs Levi that they are returning to trust. Levi is unwilling to turn back so soon but he's forced to concede when Erwin informs him that Wall Rose has possibly been breached. Levi arrives back in Trost in time to find two Titans bearing down on four soldiers at the base of the wall. He quickly kills the Titans and demands the soldiers fill him in on what has happened. Three days later, after Aaron wakes up in a dungeon beneath the courthouse, Levi assures him that the higher-ups will let him join the Survey Corps and that he himself will make sure that Aaron does not get out of hand. Should that happen, Levi says, he will not hesitate to end Aaron's life. After Aaron issues a verbal challenge to the audience during his trial, Levi violently beats him on the spot, mockingly observing that while chained on his knees, Aaron is perfectly placed for his kicks. Armin has to restrain an infuriated Mikasa from coming to Aaron's rescue and killing Levi. She glares at Levi after the trial, seemingly unnerving him. After the trial, Levi hands Aaron over to his special operations squad for the next month. They move into the old Survey Corps HQ inside Wall Rose. Levi orders Aaron to sleep in the castle dungeon so that if he accidentally transforms, he won't cause many problems. During this month, Hanji conducts experiments to try to get Aaron to transform. If Aaron goes out of control in Titan form, Levi intends to cut him out of the nape in a manner that would sever his human limbs which would grow back in any case. However, Aaron fails to transform and his hands do not heal from his bites. The squad decides to postpone any further experiments. One day while having tea with them, Aaron leans over to pick up a spoon and accidentally generates a partial Titan body. The alarm squad threatens him and Levi has to defuse the situation. Levi tells Aaron not to take their actions personally and that they have good intentions. Later, after Hanji explains why Aaron triggered his Titan form, Levi's entire squad punishes themselves and apologizes to Aaron for acting on assumption. During the 57th Expedition Beyond the Walls, Levi and his team are ordered to ride in the safest area of Irwin's formation. When the formation is suddenly attacked by a horde of titans coming at their right flank, they change course toward the titan's forest and Levi's squad takes the central route. Once the female titan appears, his squad begs Levi to give them orders, but he continues to ride forward and look straight ahead. Aaron badly wants to transform and fight the female titan, but Petra and her comrades urge him to trust them and Aaron hesitates. Levi tells Aaron that he's not wrong for wanting to transform and that nobody can know the correct choice until after they've made it. Whatever Aaron chooses to do, Levi says, he should do it and believe that he will not regret it. Aaron then declares that he trusts completely in his squad's victory and they keep going through the forest. This enables the Survey Corps to capture the female titan. Shortly afterward, Levi gets separated from his squad. He reunites with Erwin and prepares to extract the human in control of the female titan from the nape of her neck. He and Mike attack her and try to cut her hands, only to discover her ability to harden her skin. After Erwin orders the cannons to be loaded with explosives and aimed at the female titan's wrists, 
Levi, standing on her head, taunts her with threats of violence, telling her that he would like to face her in her human form over the deaths of countless of his soldiers. In response, the female Titan begins to roar. Shortly after, Titan comes at her from all directions and devour her. On Irwin's order, Levi and the rest of the Survey Corps try to protect her from them, but they fail due to the sheer number of Titans. Irwin orders the Corps to retreat back to the Karanes district. However, Irwin notes that the steam from the Titan bodies will make it difficult for the rest of the Survey Corps to see the signal flares. He then realizes that the human inside the female Titan may have escaped, and he orders the Levi to replenish his gas canisters and blades. After the female Titan returns and kills Levi's entire squad and captures Eren, he and Mikasa join forces to rescue him. Levi tells Mikasa to distract the Titan, but avoid trying to kill her since she is capable to harden her skin. Levi then proceeds to attack the female Titan, and after a series of successful attacks, he incapacitates her. Seeing that the female Titan is now helpless, Mikasa disobeys Levi's orders and attempts to kill the person inside the Titan. However, the female Titan swings her hardened fist at Mikasa, and Levi is forced to pull Mikasa out of the way. While doing this, Levi injures his left leg. Levi then proceeds to cut through the female Titan's facial muscles, causing her to open her mouth and release Eren. He grabs Eren and flees with Mikasa, whom he reprimands for having risked the life of her special friend for the sake of vengeance. As he leaves, he takes one more look at the beaten female Titan and is visibly surprised to see it crying. As they enter Karanez after retreating, the Survey Corps receives a hostile response from the public for their failed mission. Levi is approached by Petra's father, who reveals that she wrote to him frequently. He tells Levi that, as a father, he's worried about Petra's decision to dedicate her life to him, as she is still quite young and has her whole life ahead of her. Levi continues to walk silently ahead without responding. A few days later, Aaron is summoned to the capital for a trial to decide his fate. Beforehand, Levi, Erwin, Aaron, and the other survivors reunite in the old Survey Corps HQ. Armin tells them his theory about the female Titan's true identity. Levi, still injured, does not participate in the subsequent operation in the Stoes district. During this part of the arc, he is only seen with Erwin. During the supposed breach of Wall Rose, Levi is seen accompanying Hanji and the others as they head to Ermic district while they attempt to get information from Minister Nick. Though he will not personally offer them any information, he agrees to reveal the identity of a person who is able to speak about the secrets of the walls. Historia Reese. The Shiganshina trio offer to help locate her, and in describing her, Mikasa reveals the names of Ymir, much to Hanji's and Levi's surprise. Levi is briefly seen again at Trost District, still sidelined due to his injury. After the appearance of the armored and colossus titans atop Wall Rose, a detachment of about 100 soldiers from all three military branches is gathered. Some of the MPs express disappointment not to have seen any titans nearby. Levi calls their bluff by inviting them to join the Survey Corps any day so they can go outside of the walls to fight them, whereupon they back down. Levi visits Erwin when he's well enough to talk and expresses sympathy for the loss of Erwin's arm. Hanji and Kani arrive as well to report on their findings regarding Rogako Village, and Hanji says that they support the theory that the Titans were once humans. Levi is initially skeptical because they've never found humans inside the bodies of Titans even living ones, and is depressed to think that he could have been killing people this whole time. Hanji offers some comfort in that there is no solid proof of that. By contrast, Erwin smiles at the news, which disturbs Levi to the point he says Erwin is going to make him sick. Since Erwin is exhausted from his ordeal, Levi notifies him that he has taken the liberty of selecting members for his new special operations squad. He believes that Eren needs to be pushed into desperation. Levi, Hanji, and members of their squads retreat to a remote cabin where Eren and Historia are being hidden. Their objective is still to seal the hole in Wall Maria, and if Eren can do that as a Titan, it would save the logistical costs of hauling out materials like originally planned. When Eren says he's willing, Levi gives Hanji the responsibility of running the experiments necessary to test the limits of Eren's abilities. However, Hanji also wants to lay low because Minister Nick has been murdered. After hearing the details, Levi disagrees. An enemy that persistent will find them eventually. He also guesses that Nick didn't reveal any information, as all his fingernails had been pulled out. Someone willing to talk, he states, would have given up after just one. Levi sees two paths forward. They can either flee before they are stabbed in the back or exterminate their would-be killers. 
Hanji suggests that they do both, and Levi notes that this is exactly what Erwin would say. After running their experiment, Levi receives a note from Erwin and asks those members of his squad dumb enough to trust the commander to come with him. They manage to escape before intruders reach their cabin and hurry to their rendezvous point. When they arrive, they're approached by a crowd that blame the Survey Corps for the poor living conditions in Trost District. In the middle of this, a carriage comes crashing through and appears to kidnap Aaron and Historia. However, the kidnapped ones are actually John Kirstein and Armin in disguise. Levi and his squad track the kidnappers to their hideout. They attack the kidnappers before the deception can be discovered and quickly subdue them. Their leader turns out to be Demo Reeves, the merchant boss who was blocking the gate with his cargo the day Trost was invaded. Reeves protests about not knowing anything and Levi suggests that they go out and talk. Levi says he's not here to lecture him, but find out about the deal Reeves made with the interior military police. Reeves reveals that there was no deal so much as if his company didn't cooperate, his employees would be out of jobs and he would be dead. Though the Reeves company does do a lot of good for Trost, Levi recognizes that this will not last and compares Reeves' fight with the military police to that of the Survey Corps against the Titans. So that Reeves will fight too, Levi offers to hand over Aaron and Historia on three conditions. The Reeves company will work against the interior military police together with the Survey Corps, the Reeves company will trust the Survey Corps completely, and the Survey Corps will receive priority access to any luxury goods. It's a hard bargain, but Reeves agrees and baits Sanes and Ralph of the Interior First Squad into a trap so that they can be captured by the Survey Corps. In hiding below ground, Levi and Hanji begin work on Sanes, who proves difficult to crack, even after being beaten and having his fingernails removed to equal the treatment received by Minister Nick. Sanes expresses some remorse for the future that he has had to inflict, but believes it was necessary to maintain peace within the walls. Levi is unsympathetic and suggests beginning Sanus' torture properly if he does not answer questions correctly, starting with the identity of the Reese family. Rather than giving in to the torture, Sanus goads them into tormenting him further. He knows what it's like to be the torturer and the power it gives. Disgusted, Levi suggests they take a break and they leave the door open a crack behind them. This allows Sanus to overhear a staged conversation between Levi and Ralph where Levi claims that Ralph told them everything and Ralph in turn pretends to have no care for Sanus, calling him a pain and asking if there will be a bed in his cell. Levi adds that if Sanus speaks, the two of them can even be housed in the same cell together later. This is enough to break Sanus, and he confesses that the Reese family is the true royal bloodline. Demo Reeves and his employees are killed and the murders pinned on the survey corps. While his squad waits in an alley for their part in the rescue plan, Levi, along with most of Hanji's, manages to catch up with the first interior squad in town and spy on the hearse and coffins that they suspect are carrying Aaron and Historia. Levi is disturbed that the first squad figured out the Reeves company deception because that would require thinking like him, or perhaps more like Kenny the Ripper. Nifa calls him an urban legend, but Levi assures her that he is real and that they lived together when he was a kid. He notices how the tactics he uses are strongly influenced by Kenny. As he realizes this, Kenny Ackerman appears behind him, wearing vertical maneuvering equipment that is modified to work with guns for killing humans. Levi narrowly dodges being shot, but Nephi is killed instantly. Levi throws one of his blades at Kenny and dodges his next shot by throwing his cloak as cover. He makes a break for it, frustrated that Kenny can read all of his moves and shocked that Kenny of all people has become an MP. Members of the anti-personal control squad ambush Levi and he takes cover in a bar to avoid being shot. Kenny follows him inside. The two of them exchange barbs about their past and while Kenny talks, Levi takes the opportunity to load the barkeeper's rifle and reposition an alcohol bottle allowing him to see Kenny in its reflection. Kenny figures that Levi joined the survey corps for the same reason he joined the military police. He found something he wanted to do and hobbies make life worth living. When Levi asks if killing soldiers is part of that, Kenny admits he will kill anyone if it gets the job done and says Levi would do the same. Levi agrees and shoots Kenny by aiming with the bottle's reflection. The shot hits the chair Kenny is holding but is still strong enough to throw him back outside and Levi takes the opportunity to escape. He tosses a chair through a window to distract the squad members outside before emerging himself and firing a grappling line into the throat of the nearest one. The remaining two members nearby prepare to fire, but Levi uses the dead man as a meat shield 
so that he can get in close in and kill them. He continues to flee and curses that there are still over 10 pursuers left. Levi catches up with his squad while the anti-personal squad is chasing him. He kills one of the MPs before landing in Armin's wagon and orders them to stop following the hearse. Their plan is leaked and now Aaron and Historia are being used as bait to kill them. As they make their escape, he tells his squad that they must kill their pursuers whenever they have the opportunity. But Jean is unable to do so and finds himself on the wrong side of a gun. Before Jean can be slain, Armin uses his pistol to lethally shoot the MP and save his life. Though Levi's squad escapes intact, Armin is deeply bothered by the fact he was willing to kill someone and Levi explains to him that he was able to pull the trigger because he knew that if he did not, then John would have died. John admits he thought Levi's way of doing things was wrong, but it was more that he did not want to hurt other people. Levi agrees that John's softness put them in a bad spot, but he doesn't know what is right or wrong and John might not have been wrong. Levi and his squad trap Marlo Freudenberg and Hitch Drace, who have been sent into the forest to look for Survey Corps soldiers. They take their uniforms with the intention of infiltrating the military police to find out where Aaron and Historia have been taken. Before he can announce their fates, Hitch challenges him over the civilian deaths in Stoa's district and berates his squad over the disappearance and presumed death of Annie, who she never really got to know. Levi corrects her about Annie's true state and that she was the Titan hiding in Stoas and she is currently being held, though that is not likely a fact that they want new recruits to know. It bothers him that collectively, so many people are in the dark about the truth of their world. Marlowe asks if the Survey Corps really killed the people from the Reeves Company and Levi replies that it was the Interior Military Police, which causes Marlowe to offer helping him to set things right. Levi is skeptical but John steps in and asks if he can handle this. Levi allows it. John tests their character to see where their hearts truly lie and when it is clear that they have no intention of killing him or following their original orders, he believes that this is enough to convince Levi to trust them. Levi and his squad use the information gathered by Hitch and Marlowe to attack an interior military police compound. The infiltration goes successfully with the interior MPs being disabled rather than killed but they don't find Aaron and Historia. Levi and his squad depart with one hostage who Levi interrogates about their location, but the MP refuses to talk, instead spouting off about how the Survey Corps will be lucky to survive and how Erwin and the other captured soldiers will be executed. He tells Levi that their only option is to surrender and hope that's enough to spare their comrades' lives. Undeterred, Levi asks again where Aaron and Krista are located. The MP is surprised that Levi would give up on his comrades, but Levi doubts the crown would spare them and savagely twists and breaks the MP's arm for not answering his question. The third time he asks about Aaron and Krista, the MP is panicked and confesses that he doesn't know where they are. Kenny Ackerman is extremely tight-lipped about it. Both Levi and Mikasa are surprised to hear the last name, but they are interrupted by people approaching on foot before they can question the MP further. The squad prepares to do an ambush. However, the newcomers turn out to be Hanji along with Marlo and Hitch, who have come with good news. The false charges against the Survey Corps have been dropped and the capital is now under the control of Commander-in-Chief Darius Zackley. Levi's squad celebrates and he asks what in the world could have been done to accomplish this. Hanji answers that it was the individual choices of many people that changed their world. He apologizes for losing Keiji, Nifa, and Goggles, but Hanji finds hope in the fact that their sacrifice enabled Levi to beat the first interior squad, to which Levi admits that their leader and his team are still out there. Hanji has a lead though and suspects that Eren is going to be eaten in order to obtain his Titan power. Erwin had a report commissioned on the Reese estate and assuming that Eren and Historia were captured by the Reese family, that is likely where they're being held. The day Wall Maria fell, a group of bandits burned down the village chapel while the Reese family was inside massacring everyone except for Rod Reese. Days later, he initiated contact with Historia. Levi concludes that there must be something special about her bloodline. The destroyed chapel is what interests Hanji though because fire should not have torn down a stone building and then Rod Reese rebuilt the place with his own assets. There's something strange about all that. Levi agrees and has everyone head there. He warns his squad that Kenny will be their biggest obstacle because fighting him will be like fighting Levi himself. Levi asks Mikasa if she thinks Kenny might be related to her since they share the same last name, Ackerman, but she doesn't directly answer. She only knows that her father's family was persecuted and not the reason why. 
Levi then asks her whether she experienced a moment when she felt a sudden power awaken inside her. Upon confirming this, Levi tells Mikasa that he and Kenny also experienced such moments in their lives. They arrive at the chapel and find the secret door leading underground. Levi and the others make preparations for facing the anti-personnel control squad which is waiting for them below. The group sends barrels of gunpowder and bags of oil down the stairs, setting fire to them and filling the underground chamber with smoke, reducing visibility and the usefulness of firearms. Most of the squad exacerbates the problem with signal flares while Levi and Mikasa scout out their enemies. Levi calls for his squad to take them down and the team springs into action. After a concerted push, they manage to drive back the anti-personnel squad. Levi leaves Armin to take care of an injured Hanji while he and the others chase after them. The squad finds Rod Reese transforming into a titan and Historia trying to free Eren from his chains. When she's blown back, Levi, Connie, and John take the keys to help free him. Making matters worse, the roof begins to collapse from the size of Rod's titan and the team is trapped against the wall of the chamber. Eren is hesitant to act until Levi pushes him to make a choice, just like he did back when they were facing the female titan. The memory is enough to get Eren on his feet. He grabs the armor bottle that had fallen out of Rod's bag and breaks it between his teeth as he transforms. Eren's titan form then crystallizes, stabilizing the cavern around the squad, preventing them from being crushed. Even after he's cut out of it, his hardened form doesn't appear, which Levi states is a huge development as they can now seal the hole in Wall Maria. Levi and his squad exit the cavern through a hole made in the ceiling above and see the trail of destruction left in the wake of Rod Reese's Titan. Armin believes that it is an abnormal since it's ignoring them and Levi tells everyone that they're going after it. Eren entertains the possibility of getting eaten by Rod since that would turn him back into a human who would then have the powers of the progenitor Titan. But Levi disabuses him of the notion. Levi begrudgingly allows Historia to take part in the attack against Rod, thinking about the time he threatened her and told her to fight or run. Erwin meets up with them and Levi briefs him on the situation. The Survey Corps regroups in Orvid District in preparation to fight Rod. At dawn, Historia joins the others in preparation to defeat the gigantic Titan and Levi tries to convince her to stand down, but she pushes back using his own reasoning about choosing whether to run or to fight. Levi watches the Garrens' cannon attacks against Rod Reese, noting how ineffective they are. When the Titan reaches the wall, Levi and his squad move forward with Erwin's plan to cripple Rod Reese's hands with explosives and have Aaron shove barrels of gunpowder inside Rod's mouth, causing him to explode. The plan is a success and they begin cutting down the flying pieces of flesh to find Rod Reese's true body and Historia is the one who kills him. Sometime after the fight, Levi and a subordinate find Kenny sitting under a tree in the woods. Kenny is heavily wounded and Levi sends the other soldier away. As if to mock him, Kenny shows Levi one of the syringes with the serum that transforms a person into a titan. However, Levi knows that if Kenny was inclined to use it, he would have done so by now. Levi asks him about the first king and why he doesn't want humanity to survive, but Kenny only knows that it was for that reason that the Ackermans opposed him. When Levi, now knowing that his last name is Ackerman, asks Kenny what exactly was he to his mother, Kenny laughs and reveals that he was her older brother, thereby making him Levi's uncle. Levi questioned him on why he abandoned him and is told that the reason he left Levi was because he believed he was not fit to be a parent. He gives Levi the serum just before dying as Levi looked at his late uncle with a solemn expression. After his story is coronation, Levi is confronted by the new queen and the members of the special operations squad. She punches him as Demo Reeves had told her to do and she dares him to retaliate. Instead of getting angry, however, he smiles and thanks his friends. Two months later, Levi backs up Historia on providing a home for the poor and orphans, considering that he was from the underground city as well. He's present at Trost when Hanji Zoe is testing out the executioner from hell and attends the military meeting where Erwin Smith goes over a new expedition to Shiganshina. Erwin decides to entrust Levi with the Titan injection since he has the highest chance of surviving. It will be Levi's call if and when to use it. The next morning, instructor Keith Shaddis is visited at the training camp by Aaron, Hanji, Mikasa, Armin, John, Sasha, and Levi. The reason for this is that Aaron now remembers a past memory where his father, Dr. Yeager, met Keith after the massacre in the Reese family chapel. 
Aaron asks Keith to tell him everything he knows about his father, and they go to a house to talk. Levi remarks that Keith has changed a lot since they last met, remembering his head full of hair and then looking at his now bald scalp. Keith starts by warning them that he knows nothing of Grisha's secrets, but anyway recounts to them all his experiences with him ever since they met 20 years ago. Until the day of the fall of Wall Maria, after Keith found Aaron unconscious in the forest after receiving the coordinate, a furious Hanji tells him that he is not the one who decides if that information is valuable or not and reprimands him for not saying anything about it to the survey corps before, prompting Levi to tell Hanji to stop. Hanji continues to chastise him and is only silenced when they are again asked to stop by Aaron. During a meeting with other members of the survey corps, Levi sits silently and listens to Hanji tell Erwin what Keith Shadis explained to them on their visit. After the meeting is finished, Levi waits until all the other members have left and then shuts the door, intent on having a private conversation with Erwin. He tries to persuade Erwin to sit out on the upcoming mission and to leave it to the others, telling him that in his weakened state, Erwin will simply be Titan food and that he's not willing to carry along any extra baggage. Erwin, however, explains to Levi that the chain of command must be preserved and that he has an intense desire to see what is in Grisha's basement which prompts Levi to threaten to break both of his legs. However, this does not deter Erwin, and Levi realizes that he will unfortunately not be able to change Erwin's mind, even though he fears his death as a wounded soldier. Late that night at a special red meat dinner, Levi breaks up a fight between Aaron and John by kicking and throwing them both into submission. He then orders that they and the rest of the court go back to their quarters and go to bed. Shortly after, Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa talk about their returning home, and Levi listens to them while in the barn. As he hears Armin's ambitions, his expression is lowered and darkened. The next day, just before sunset, Levi, along with the other Survey Corps leaders, salute the higher-ups of the brass, including Darius Zackley and Commander Pixis. Levi watches on as the citizens of the Trust District cheer for the Survey Corps and call out his name. He acts modest and calls him selfish before seeing Erwin cheer back at the enthusiastic civilians. Right after, the 58th expedition begins. Levi rides out with the corps at Erwin's side as he glances back at Aaron and Mikasa. Near dawn, the survey corps walk on foot through a forest on a mountain, leading their horses. Levi questions a subordinate, asking if they are still not at the bottom of the mountain, worrying that it is almost dawn. As squad Levi talk among themselves, John spots a titan and Hanji orders the court to halt and illuminate the area, using fragments from the cave below the Reese Chapel. Hanji then states that the titan is asleep and the court continue. Eventually, they reach Shiganshina district and ride in on their horses. Erwin orders the soldiers to be wary of hidden titans and then orders them to switch to vertical maneuvering equipment and begin the mission. The soldiers leave their horses and rush toward the gate to Shiganshina. As Aaron arrives atop the inner wall, he stares at the ruins of his hometown. He's quickly urged on by Levi to get to the outer gate and the two take off. As per the plan, 100 soldiers covered by hoods rush to the outer gate to confuse any watching enemies, making sure they don't know which soldier is which. Aaron, Hanji, and Levi wonder why there are no titans in the area, and Levi claims that they have fallen right into the enemy's hands. However, the two agree that they must go forward with the plan anyway as Aaron flies up above the gate and prepares to transform. After Aaron successfully seals the hole in the wall, Levi reminds him that they have to kill all of their enemies, including Reiner and Berthold, before their mission will be truly finished. When Reiner is discovered by one of the Survey Corps members and attempts to attack Armin, Levi attacks Reiner, shoving his blade through the nape of his neck and stabbing him before kicking him to the ground. After seeing that Reiner survived the brutal attack, Levi angrily laments that he was not able to kill Reiner. While on the ground, Reiner shifts into his titan form. Levi makes his way back to Erwin's side, where the latter begins issuing commands. He tasks Levi with helping to protect the horses, believing that Levi is the only soldier he can trust to take out the beast titan. He arrives first out of the two squads sent and immediately kills two titans, ordering the soldiers under his command that they cannot die. After Berthold is thrown over the wall and transforms, Levi and his soldiers are bombarded by a barrage of stones and boulders from the Beast Titan. They retreat to the wall where Erwin meets them. Levi asks about Eren and squad Hanji's well-being, and Erwin informs the soldiers of their increasingly desperate situation. 
As the young recruits fall into a panic, Levi asks Erwin if he has some kind of plan. Regarding the situation, Levi gives Erwin the advice to save as many lives as possible by loading them on Aaron to make an escape. Levi continues by saying that he will fight the Beast Titan. Although Levi knows that there is little chance of a victory, he deduces that there is still hope for the Survey Corps if Erwin and Aaron survive. But for Levi to take down the Beast Titan, Erwin would sacrifice himself and his men. At this point, Erwin is melancholic, but Levi makes the decision and swears that he will take down the Beast Titan after telling his commander that he must die for them. In an attempt to get closer to the Beast Titan, Levi uses the line of Titans around him to his advantage while in an open space. To his side, he notices Erwin's men following closely behind, fear-stricken as they ride toward their death. After Erwin and most of the Survey Corps fall when charging the Beast Titan, Levi takes out the surrounding Titans and engages Zeke. After realizing what has happened, Zeke attempts to crush Levi, who merely dodges, slicing up the Titan's arm to pieces in the process. Levi then proceeds to slash the Beast Titan's eyes, blinding it, then cuts up its ankles, which causes it to topple over. Slicing open the nape, Levi thrusts his blade into Zeke's mouth, commenting that his body is heavily damaged after transforming into a Titan so Zeke cannot transform again while he is busy healing it. Levi decides he cannot kill him yet, pondering over whether there are anyone still alive who he would use the Titan injection on and have them eat Zeke to steal his Titan power. However, Levi is interrupted and shocked when the cart Titan snatches Zeke and carries him away in its mouth. Zeke then orders the remaining Titans to kill Levi, but Levi, remembering his promise to Erwin, finds his resolve and begins to take on the Titans and chase down Zeke. Levi pursues Zeke and the Car Titan back to Shiganshina District, where he is stopped by his lack of supplies. He orders Aaron to give him all his gas and blades so that he can continue the chase, but Aaron panics and demands that Levi give Armin, who has been mortally wounded, the Titan injection that he is carrying. Just as he's about to hand Aaron the injection, a recruit crawls up onto the roof with Erwin, who is on the brink of death. Levi decides that he will give it to Erwin instead of Armin, which enrages Aaron. Appalled at Aaron and Mikasa, Levi reminds them of how important Erwin's survival is and orders them not to let their feelings bias their decision. When Aaron refuses to step down, Levi forcefully punches his face and knocks him aside before being pinned down by an enraged Mikasa. Aaron and Mikasa try to convince Levi of Armin's value, while Flock argues that Levi is correct to save Erwin, and the fight between them is only narrowly avoided by the arrival of Hanji, who pulls Mikasa off of Levi. Levi prepares to inject Erwin, but is given pause by Aaron, who tries to sway Levi by telling him of Armin's dream to see the ocean. Levi orders his comrades to leave him alone while he injects Erwin. As Levi prepares to inject Erwin, he recalls Armin's conversation with Aaron and Mikasa about the ocean and Erwin's dream to see the secrets locked in Aaron's basement. As he begins injecting Erwin, Levi recalls Kenny's final words about people becoming slaves to their own desires and is surprised when Erwin lashes out in his sleep, knocking away the syringe. As he watches Erwin, Levi recalls his order to Erwin to give up on his dreams and die with the rest of the Survey Corps recruits and the look of relief on Erwin's face at the order. After injecting Armin, Levi watches as Armin's mindless titan form devours Berthold and explains to a confused flock that after all he's given, it is time for Erwin to finally rest. Levi attempts to apologize to Erwin for failing to kill the beast titan, but Hanji informs him that Erwin has already died. On top of the wall, Levi notices that Armin has awoken. He fires a signal flare for the soldiers to regroup. He orders Aaron to tell Armin about the events that occurred in the past few hours. Armin shows remorse for the measures his comrades have taken for him, but Levi advocates that he should not be regretful. Afterward, Levi follows Aaron, Mikasa, and Hanji to the Jaeger family's basement. When the group find that Aaron's key cannot open the locked door, Levi proceeds to kick the door open. They inspect the basement thoroughly, and Mikasa finds a drawer which needs Aaron's key to unlock. Initially empty, Levi discovers a false bottom, and under it are three hidden books kept intact with various preservatives. They open the first book, and within it, they find an uncannily realistic portrait of Grisha standing beside a fair-haired woman and a child. On the back of it, Grisha had written that it is not an illustration, it is called a photograph, and humanity has not perished. 
While serving their punishment in jail cells, Mikasa and Eren discuss the journals and Grisha's memories until Hanji, Levi, and Armin interrupt Eren and provoke them about what they're talking about until Levi accuses him of going through a phase as a teenager and lets them go, claiming that their sentence is being cut short because of their low numbers and their superior's failure to catch the armored and beast titans. The group, now with John, meet Historia afterward to speak with her after she finishes reading a letter left to her by Ymir. At the meeting, everyone, including all other military commanders and officials, meet to discuss the recent expedition, the journals, and the huge loss of life. Once the information obtained from Eren's basement is released to the world, Hanji and Levi meet with Roy and Pierre to discuss the revelations and how the public are handling it. The royal government plans for the Survey Corps to be awarded with medals in a ceremony for their bravery and success. Overhearing a fight breaking out among the younger recruits, Levi cuts in to stop them and tell them to prepare for the beginning of the ceremony. A military audience gathers in a large room where Historia presents each of the nine soldiers with a medal of honor in the form of a dark bolo tie with the wings of freedom on it. Months later, in the summer season, Shiganshinan district is once again populated with people as all the titans had been cleared out. Finally, the Survey Corps once again ventures outside of Wall Maria on an expedition for the first time in six years. They find a trail left by a titan crawling along the ground and follow it until they reach the edge of Paradis Island. Here, the Survey Corps sees the ocean for the first time. John, Connie, and Sasha begin splashing and playing while Hanji gleefully picks up never-before-seen oceanic materials, such as coral, much to Levi's dismay as he attempts to caution them against touching the water. One year after the Battle of Shiganshina District, Levi and other members of the Survey Corps make contact with the anti-Marlian volunteers, Yelena and Onyankapon who rebel against the rest of the Marleyan crew on their ship. The two defectors show Levi and Hanji their technology, and Levi is concerned by how greatly Hanji is impressed with Marley's level of advancement. He asks if the defectors would notify Marley that they've eliminated all the titans on the island, but Yelena says they would not. They are here under orders from Zeke to free the Eldian people. Levi attends the military meeting to decide whether to cooperate with Zeke and the anti-Marleyan volunteers. Though he does not voice an opinion, he asks Eren why he withheld the information that he could control the founding titan's power if he is in contact with a royal-blooded titan. Not wanting to disrupt the meeting, Levi tells Eren they will discuss this later. Once the Survey Corps agrees to work with Yelena and Yonyankapon, Levi assists them in capturing the soldiers sent on future Marleyan expeditions. He later participates in the infiltration into Marley and the ensuing raid on Liberio. After the Jaw Titan sneaks behind and jumps on the back of the Attack Titan, Levi takes note and goes to intercept it. The Jaw Titan tries to bite into the neck of the Attack Titan, but Levi severs the muscles on the left side of its face, rendering it unable to rip out the nape. Then, both Levi and Mikasa engage it, along with many other members of the Survey Corps. The Cart Titan's Panzer unit makes a surprise attack, eliminating many of the Corps and forcing them to fall back. Noticing the sudden arrival of Zeke Jaeger's Beast Titan, Levi orders the surviving soldiers to regroup and stares down the Beast Titan. Levi is on standby as the Beast Titan sends debris flying into the surrounding area. He observes until the Titan calls for him to come out and later ambushes it by quickly slicing its nape, knocking it down. Levi proceeds to cut Zeke out of his Titan form and, before grappling away, throws a bomb into the Beast Titan's nape detonating it and demoralizing the Marley troops with the presumed death of their war chief. As the Survey Corps retreat, Levi helps Aaron aboard the airship and then kicks him into the wall and places him under arrest. He takes Aaron to a back room where Zeke and his attendant, Yelena, are. Both he and Zeke exchange insults when two stowaways are brought to them. He listens to Hanji and silently agrees when Hanji states that Aaron made the entire parody island a target due to his actions in Marley. Once they return to the island, Levi rides into the city in a carriage with Zeke. He mock threatens to kill Zeke, send his corpse back to Marley, and then reveal everything about his plot, which would spell the end for his grandparents. However, Levi admits as long as Zeke's secret plan is real, he's willing to wait a little longer before slicing him into pieces. Levi escorts Zeke to a titan forest with a number of soldiers explaining that it will not be easy for him to escape from such an environment. Zeke asks Levi if he can show the trees to Gabby and Falco, 
Levi responds that it depends on his own actions. Despite his reservations, Levi is convinced by his subordinates to allow them to drink wine imported from Marley while they're guarding Zeke in the forest. Zeke later tells Levi about the method he had used to turn the people of Rogako into titans. After the explanation finishes, Levi admonishes Zeke for his lack of guilt and tells him that he clearly has no concern for human life. He is shaken off and told not to assume how he felt. Zeke changes the subject by asking when he will be allowed to carry out his experiment with Aaron. Levi tells him that this is not his call, but both agree that it would be a mistake to wait around too long. After a Survey Corps messenger arrives at the camp, Varys notices Levi that Darius Zackley has been assassinated and also informs him of Commander Pix's plan to deal with the Jaegerists. Dismayed to hear that his friends and comrades have essentially died for nothing to protect Aaron, Levi tells them they are altering the plan. He suggests they capture one of the Jaegerists and force them to eat Zeke. Then, when Historia gives birth several months from now and is ready to inherit, they will feed the Jaegerists to her. Levi orders Varys to go and form Pixies and it descends from the tree. Despite the holes in this plan, Levi admits to himself that he does not care about Pixies' reply. After trading a few barbs with Zeke, Levi gets lost in his thoughts. He considers how he will soon fulfill the vow he made to Erwin during the Battle of Shiganshina and give meaning to his deceased comrades. Turning around, he notices Zeke running into the forest before Levi can react. However, Zeke lets out a piercing scream. He looks on in horror as the numerous Survey Corps soldiers above him begin to fall out of the trees and transform into titans. Levi is caught off guard but comes to his senses in time to avoid one of the titans charging him. Remembering how his subordinates insisted they enjoy the wine offered and Zeke's comment on it from earlier, Levi theorizes that the wine was indeed the likely cause of the soldiers transforming. Noticing these titans are faster and more unpredictable, he reflects on if his subordinates are still inside and conscious of their actions. As the titans swarm around him in mid-air, Levi closes his eyes. Levi slaughters his former subordinates and collects several thunder spears before chasing down Zeke. Catching up with him, Levi kills one of Zeke's three titan escorts and meets Zeke's gaze with a murderous look. Levi quickly dispatches another of the titans before Zeke transforms into the Beast Titan. As Zeke butchers the final titan and throws the bloody pieces at him, Levi dodges Zeke's attack while chopping up large tree branches to hide himself in mid-air. He criticizes Zeke for not anticipating that he would be capable of killing his fellow soldiers. Falling towards Zeke, Levi fires and hits Zeke's nape with four thunder spears before quickly detonating them. Cutting Zeke's mangled and burned body from his titan form, Levi insults him before dragging him out of the forest. When the tied-up Zeke awakens inside a horse-drawn cart, Levi instructs him to not move, revealing that he has placed the tip of a thunder spear inside his stomach and attached the fuse around his neck. Levi chastises Zeke for killing his men before starting to cut off chunks of his legs. Hearing Zeke scream, Levi shouts at him to shut up, explaining that this has to be done to prevent him from becoming a titan. Zeke weakly asks where his glasses are, but Levi brushes it aside, stating he would no longer be needing them. While Levi steers the cart, Zeke begins muttering about his plan to euthanize Eldia in order to ensure the world's safety. Upon hearing this, Levi begins mocking him, saying that his impending death at the hands of a titan is too merciful when considering the lives he has taken. Zeke weakly protests that he was saving their children from living in a cruel world, prompting Levi to angrily prepare to cut off his legs again. Terrified, Zeke pulls the pin on the thunder spear lodged in his stomach. A shocked Levi is unable to react and is caught in the resulting explosion. The two of them are launched from the cart and Levi is sent hurling towards a nearby river. Levi's unconscious body is found shortly afterwards by Hanji and a group of Jaegerists. When a soldier suggests shooting Levi, Hanji insists that he is already dead, prompting Flock to request that he be allowed to check for a pulse. Before Flock can check, he's distracted by the sight of Zeke emerging from a nearby Titan, allowing Hanji to grab Levi's body and dive into the river to escape. Since he was near Zeke when the Thunder Spear was activated, Levi's face is severely scarred by the resulting debris. In addition, Levi also lost two of the fingers on his right hand. Levi is eventually awakened from his coma by a message sent by Aaron to all subjects of Ymir, announcing his intentions to destroy the world outside of Paradis. 
The two resolve to find a way to stop Eren, and Hanji creates a makeshift transport for Levi to be moved in. As Levi is being transported, they cross paths with the Car Titan and the Marleyan General. Hanji approaches the two, insisting that they and Levi are harmless. Levi negotiates with the soldiers, pointing out that they have a common goal in killing Zeke. Reluctantly, the soldiers agree to work together. During the nightfall and route to harbor, Levi attempts to rest, but is awakened by the commotion being made by the others in camp. After daybreak, Levi would stay behind with the non-combatants as his allies confront the Jaegerists at the harbor. Levi and the others head towards the Azuma Bito's ship on top of the Car Titan. After arriving in Oriha, Armin finds Levi walking despite his injuries. Levi refuses to rest any longer and insists on interrogating Yelena about Eren's next destination. Yelena claims that Eren is going to Fort Salta, but Levi is concerned by her sudden cooperation. As the group prepares to depart Oriha, Levi prepares himself for battle despite his injuries. When the others wonder how he will be able to fight with only two fingers on one hand, Levi brushes their concerns aside and merely states he will manage fine. He ridicules Hanji for failing to make friends with Pik, but becomes concerned when his commander begins musing about their fallen comrades. Preparations are interrupted by Flock, who arrives in the flying boat's hangar damaging its fuel tank, necessitating repairs. Eren's Titans arrive as the repairs are being made and Hanji volunteers to hold them off while the ship departs. Levi stops Hanji only long enough to tell them to dedicate their heart. As the flying boat reaches Eren, it comes under fire from the Beast Titan. Levi and his comrades jump from the boat and use their maneuvering gear to evade the beast's projectiles before engaging it directly. The beast is quickly defeated, but Zeke is nowhere to be found. The group decides to retreat to a safe distance so Armin can transform and try to uncover Zeke with the blast, but the plan is interrupted when an army of titans begins generating on Eren's back and absconds with Armin. Levi reassures his team that Armin is unhurt, as he would have transformed otherwise. Peek attempts to kill Eren, but is defeated by the titans, and Levi orders the remaining soldiers to pursue Armin, as he is their only hope of stopping more titans from appearing. The group doesn't make it far before Berthold's Colossus Titan appears. The Colossus disables Reiner's Titan and then throws it at the group, knocking them off Eren's Titan. Levi is left too injured by the impact to move, but he manages to use the last of his strength to save Connie from being devoured by a Titan. However, his leg is caught in the Titan's jaw and Mikasa is forced to save him. Passing out from pain, Levi begins to fall and is only saved when Connie manages to catch him. The entire group is saved by the timely arrival of Falco, who has learned to fly with his jaw titan form. A disagreement begins atop Falco's titan over whether to attack Eren's nape or save Armin first, and Levi makes the decision to split up and do both. Mikasa tries to protest, but Levi insists that they are no longer in a position where they can care about Eren's well-being. As he reflects on his inability to carry out Erwin's final order and kill Zeke, Levi begins to wonder why his comrades all dedicated themselves to the Survey Corps' mission. As he remembers his comrades, Levi asserts that he does not regret saving Armin's life over Erwin's, since Armin has always had the same look in his eyes that his fallen comrades did. As he observes the battle from Falco's Titan, Levi is perplexed to see a handful of the Titans begin to defend his comrades from the rest of the Titans. He is immediately brought out of his stupor by the sight of Zeke emerging from Eren's spine and calling out to him. Without hesitation, Levi decapitates Zeke before returning to Falco. The group returns to Salta while Armin transforms atop Eren's Titan. From the fort, they are relieved to see that Reiner has survived, but are dismayed to see that both Eren and the source of all living matter have survived as well. Connie suggests killing the source but Levi insists that they have been left with no other option than to kill Eren. Before they can attack Eren again, the source begins emitting smoke that billows into the fort. Realizing that the smoke is going to transform the Eldians present into Titans, Levi quickly orders Mikasa and Kik to leave the fort with him on Falco so that they are not put in danger by the Titans. Piek departs to help Reiner fight the centipede, while Falco takes Levi and Mikasa directly to Eren. Mikasa deduces that Eren is inside his titan's mouth, and Levi uses a thunder spear to make a way for her to get inside and kill him. As the power of the titans is undone, and the Eldian families begin to reunite with each other, Levi rests against a rock.
he sees a vision of his fallen comrades watching him and asks if they are able to see the result of their work. The soldiers salute him in response, and Levi returns the salute. In the three years following the battle at Salta, Levi takes up residence in Marley. His injuries leave him permanently wheelchair-bound, and he is attended to by Gabby and Falco. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to us. We'll see you guys very soon in one of our next videos.